The Challenge Tour is a tough place to be. I think it's a grind, really. It's a long season, you have to play well all around. You're always traveling from one spot to the next, lots of weeks in a row, makes you really work for it. The fact that you've got 150 to 200 guys, only 20 guys can get through, so it's definitely one of the most difficult places to be. It's a good mix of guys who's coming down from the main tour, guys who's coming up, and that just gives a very good environment. You need to get your head straight, you know, and, and you have to be in a happy place to, to be able to do that. Otherwise, it's going to be tough. This is the Challenge Tour, a breeding ground for greatness. For over 30 years, it's provided a platform for some of the world's finest players to achieve the game's highest accolades. You kind of like seeing every year that the guys who's going through Challenge Tour, they can make it on the European Tour, and they can even win multiple times on the European Tour and be top 10 in the world. Starting, you know, humble beginnings and, and, and playing their way through the Challenge Tour, and, you know, especially this, if you look at the guys that have won the, the Challenge Tour rankings, you know, what, what those guys have gone on to do in their careers, it's, um, yeah, it's pretty inspiring. I think Brooks Koepka uh, getting to world number one, it's a great example of how, how good this, uh, this tour is and uh, preparing you for European tour life. I think it's a great, uh, great platform and it just shows uh, with those players that uh, we can all get there. A season-long points race, the Road to Mallorca, culminated this November at the Rolex Challenge Tour Grand Final, supported by the RNA. There, the top 20 ranked players would earn their right to perform on golf's global stage, the 2022 DP World Tour. Standing in their way first, though, the small matter of 26 tournaments in 15 countries and a gruelling eight-month campaign. It was a journey that began back in April deep in the Southern Hemisphere, with a three-week swing co-sanctioned with South Africa's Sunshine Tour. Plenty of South Africans in the field as the road to Mallorca begins in the Rainbow Nation. And that is Luca Felipe getting the season underway. For us, it's really nice. Uh, you know, we get to play home courses, we get to eat our own food, stay in my own bed, um, so that's really nice. Um, and I think we've got a, quite a big advantage back home in South Africa. Different grasses, different altitudes, stuff that we're used to that the Challenge Tour guys are not that used to. Home advantage indeed paid dividends from the off. Oliver Becker himself right in contention through 54 holes. Alongside him, a face that many will recognize, Brandon Stone, the three-time European Tour champion and former Rolex Series winner, showing sizzling form under the South African sun. Becker had momentum, but then seemed to stall on his back nine. Nine consecutive pars, two under for the day, and eight under for the tournament. The course was playing tough. I just kind of stuck it out, didn't play too aggressively. At the end of the day, that was good enough to get me into a playoff, which unfortunately I didn't win, but it was, um, it was a very good week for me personally because it's a course that I haven't really played well on before, so it was good. Brandon Stone with a chance to finish this playoff. And it's the Rolex Series winner who now grabs his first Challenge Tour title. He wins the Limpopo Championship. Cape Town supplied the next destination. It's wonderful Royal Cape Golf Club, backdrop to the Baines Whiskey, Cape Town Open. Among the Europeans hoping to rival the local golfers was Ewan Ferguson. The Scot keen to benefit from some off-season homework. Yeah, I worked really hard um, in like Qatar and Kenya and like Austria on the main tour before the Challenge Tour season started on, on my swing. I was changing quite a few things on my swing. And it was a little bit like, oh, I don't know if this will kind of work out for the best. But the winter practice had borne fruit for the young Scott, who was handily placed going into the weekend. To Ferguson at 17, this to edge closer to the lead. Oh, and he is right into this. 
I had a chance in the last to get in a, in a playoff and just missed out and finished third. Uh, it was a really good week and it made me feel a lot of confidence in what I was doing in my swing and just kind of kind of rallied on from that. That podium finish would prove a springboard for Ferguson's season. But, as in Limpopo, the tournament would come down to two South Africans, Jacques Blau and JC Ritchie. Birdie, at the first time of asking, clinched it for the latter, his second career title on the Challenge Tour. Third and final stop on our South Africa swing was the Dimension Data Pro-Am, a five-hour drive up the coast. Exclusive and alluring, the event attracted a global field. It's been a good experience. I didn't play a ton of Challenge Tour last year, just due to COVID and everything going on. But you know, this year I've started off in South Africa, third event of the year in Fancourt. But I think it was one of the Challenge Tour's biggest events. So I mean, that just gave me a huge kind of boost to start the season. The American wasted little time. His season opener ended in a tie for third alongside Oliver Becker, no less. The South African with a second top three in as many starts. I got going there with a the putter, uh, putted really nicely, hit it good. And it's a course that I, that I know really well. So yeah, I feel like I always have a chance around there. The more we play there, the better for me. As Becker continued to knock on the door, yet another South African was busy securing the silverware. After bettering Henrik Stewart in a playoff, young Wilco Nienaber made it three from three for the host nation. And that is the first of what's likely to be so many wins for Wilco Nienaber. The Sunshine Nation was swapped for Scandinavia in May, Sweden to be precise, and a quick fire double header. First up for our travelling troop, the Range Servant Challenge by Hinton Golf. Got to Sweden and I just, I was so tired from our travel because one of our flights got cancelled and it took, it took so long to get from Johannesburg to Malmo. And I just went out, I walked a course on Wednesday and then on Thursday I was just, I was just so tired. I just played golf and then happened to play really good. And that just sort of kicked me on for the rest because I proved to myself that I could play well. Kofstad's form would have come as little surprise to regular Challenge Tour followers, but he didn't have it all his own way. Denmark's Marcus Hellekilder off to a flyer. I think I didn't really look, look at the leaderboards, and uh, like I hit it to like half a foot and 15, and I was like, and then I looked at the leaderboard and I was like, I was so, I was so far behind, but yeah, I played for the for the second place and got it, so it was really cool to like, it settled me a bit down, I think, to get that second place early on. The Scandinavians were well supported all week, but it was a Scot who ultimately took home the spoils from Sweden. Well, Craig Howie had the luxury of a few for it. And this is a quite dominant performance from the Scot. Howie the hero then, as the Challenge Tour rolled on to Osterakers Golf Club near Stockholm, a venue designed by one of our former graduates, Henrik Stenson. Looking to follow in the Iceman's footsteps was Ricardo Gouvert, the Portuguese with an early clubhouse lead at 14 under. So easy this for Gouvert, back of the bunker, water looming past the flag. And that is a lovely touch. I wouldn't say it was surprising, but I felt like I wasn't playing my best going into that week. But uh, yeah, it was great to have a top three finish there. Gave me a lot of confidence the way I finished the, on Sunday as well. I just started playing much better golf. Gouveia's game heading in the right direction then, trailing behind just Bjorn Helgren and Felix Mori on a final day settled by extra holes. Yes, and that's good enough for Mori. A birdie there secures the young Frenchman his first Challenge Tour title, defeating Bjorn Helgren. <laughs> Great strides made by many of our members then. With the summer approaching, for the Challenge Tour class of 2021, the action was hotting up. Five events down, 21 still to go, with no shortage of twists and turns ahead on the road to Mallorca.
harrowing three weeks in South Africa and a fortnight in Sweden, our season was well into its stride as we arrived in Ireland for event six of 26, the Irish Challenge at Port Marnock Hotel and Golf Links. And the name gives it away, really. A link style layout rarely seen on the Challenge Tour. It was a great course. I like the golf courses where the winning score is around 10, 14, 8. I mean, you have to play well on those ones. I mean, you have to do everything well, putting, driving, irons, and being in the contention in the last couple of holes, made a couple of mistakes, but you learn from that. And to win a golf tournament, you have to be up there. Garcia Heredia will finish third, his best result of the season so far. Back in 2013, Dan Housing won in bordering Northern Ireland on his way to graduating to the main tour. And eight years on, the Dutchman would soon have to make further room on his mantelpiece. There's something special about Ireland, you know, the, the, the crowd is always nice. And then even though with COVID there weren't any crowds allowed, you know, still people would come peek over the fence and stuff like that. And, and you only have that in Ireland. And, you know, even down the last hole and in the playoff, I was just enjoying it so much there that, um, yeah, that will always remain a very special memory. Eight years after his breakthrough win up at Galgorm Castle, it's another victory in the Emerald Isle for Dan Housing. The Dutchman is your champion here at the Irish Challenge. As May rolled on into June, we moved to mainland Europe and the first of two visits to the Czech Republic scheduled for 2021. It's a place that's proved a happy hunting ground for one man in particular, France's Julien Brun. The 29-year-old has made his home in Prague over the past couple of years and was clearly in the comfort zone. Well, I've played very good last year. I didn't play many events, but I've played good. I knew I was playing good, so top 20 was a realistic goal. Not really the sort of final day move Julian Brun was hoping for. One over par for the front nine. He needs a few more shots like that. If he's going to stand a chance of winning here. To Santiago Tarrio, who's not yet won on the Challenge Tour. He missed the cut last week at the Irish Challenge, but it's going nicely, and that'll help the Spaniard setting the target at 17 under. I knew I had to birdie the last to just get a chance at it. And the crowd was a bit there. I, I live in Prague as well, so it, I had a little bit of... Uh, not a home crowd, but a few people were watching and supporting me. So I was like, OK, just give it a good chance, and uh, I hit it. What a part from Brun. The Frenchman joins Tario and Christian Crow Johannesson in the playoff. We played 18 three times, and I kept the same plan all the time. And then we moved to 10, and uh, I had a good tee shot, but end up in the rough, so I couldn't be very aggressive in my second shot. But I never really got a chance, so that's, that's a bit frustrating looking back at it. Will it be Tario who breaks the deadlock? It is, and that is a first Challenge Tour title for the Spaniard, who wins the D&D Rail Check Challenge at the fourth extra hole. It was a very special moment because my first victory here, I uh, never forgot. And that train kept on running the very next week for the Spaniard, as he notched a third place at the Challenge de Cadiz, the first of two weeks at Ibero star Real Club de Golf Novo Sancti Petri. It's a good course, but I, I have the, the special um, feelings with uh, the last week with my victory. Um, I, I remember that my confidence as in, on the top. And I can play two weeks in a row, very, very good golf. Despite a roller coaster final day, 26 year old German Hurley Long finished one place better in second. But stealing the show, thanks to three rounds in the 60s, winner by five on his first start at this level since turning professional was 22 year old Belgian Christophe Ullenaz. Straight on to event number two here in Cadiz, and this time the Challenge de España, 
With only a 24-hour turnaround for the players, preparation was key. Another birdie putt for Santiago Tarrio. What a run this is for the Spaniard. Third last week, a win the week before that. He's in cruise control out there. The Spaniard went on to set the clubhouse target on 20 under par, a mark nobody could match. Uh, was a best field and the first victory because it's the car was um, security or I catch the car for 100% for the next year and it's like, oh, all the work is, is making. And that's a second win in just three weeks for Santiago Tario, who has all but secured his end of season promotion. As Santiago celebrated in the Spanish sun, our focus fell on France for the first of four visits on the 2021 calendar. Its northwest coast served up a stunning scene. Just a shame the weather failed to play ball. It rained a lot, rained pretty much every day. We had a very good weather on Thursday, which uh, I took advantage of it and I, I shot 65, I think, six under. And that was, that was good for me because I've never played well in that course. It's a course that stressed me out a bit. Kind of a gimmicky course where you kind of had to really, you know, think your way around it. So I think the wind kind of helped me. I've always been a pretty good player in the wind. That was honestly why I was kind of excited to come over to Europe, because you don't get many calm days. His week would end in a share of second place, as Hannah continued to chase down a DP World Tour card. But still grinding it out on that final day was the Frenchman Brun. Staying present and really focus on my job on each shot, and I've done that to perfection on that back nine and, and to finish it off. That's that's probably like mentally that's uh, that was that was a strong moment. And in these conditions, that is seriously impressive stuff from Julian Brun. Well, everyone is pulling for you. Everyone is happy at the end. You have a bit uh, a bit more support than uh, in other countries. I mean, my first victories came in 2012. It was in France as well. Now it's again in France. So when uh, it doesn't happen very often to win and to do it in France is, is very special and very, very enjoyable for sure. Trip number two to the Czech Republic saw Marcel Seam roll back the years with a top five finish. But it was another Marcel Schneider who took the W in dramatic style. However, Seam wouldn't have to wait long for his own taste of glory. Perfect conditions for the final round at Le Vaudreuil. Tied for the lead through 54 holes, Germany's Marcel Seam and Hugo Leon from Chile. After a nip and tuck battle, a drop shot for Leon at 14 and again for Seam at 16 secured the German a one-stroke advantage as his playing partner looked to negotiate the closing par five. A long eagle putt for Leon, trying to put some pressure on scene. And I really felt comfortable that it was going to happen for me. I was going to be able to win somewhere down the line. I really felt it when that tournament finished. That was probably the biggest thing I got out of there. Ultimately, not to be, but a good week for the Chilean regardless, who watched on as Seam stood on the final green with two putts for birdie and the win. Well, he's waited a long time for this, and he's been through some dark times, but Marcel Seam is back. And how sweet will that taste in front of his daughter? Marcel Seam. Just lovely scenes here in France. This is by far the best week uh, of my career because my daughter was with me as well. You know, playing with, with Hugo uh, in the last group as well was really cool. Um, he's, he's a super lad and, um, you know, having my daughter with me, I was, I was crying my eyes out after the round and um, that was very special. And, um, yeah, I will never forget that week.
And so, seems celebrations brought to a close a dramatic and productive period on the road to Mallorca as our journey continued. 12 events down, 14 to go, and a week that would show just how quickly a win can change the landscape on the road to Mallorca rankings. Over the course of the season on the Challenge Tour, whether by train, plane or automobile, the players clock up some serious air miles around the globe. For some, the demands of long-haul travel takes its toll. Others, well, they simply seem to take it in their stride. It's really nice to, to get to know new cultures, new countries, new people. And uh, yeah, it's, I think we are, we are pretty lucky to, to call this uh, our job. People from all over the world play with people from Asia, America, all over Europe. Um, it's really, really cool. Um, and you meet so many new people as well. And it's amazing how small the golfing world is too. Four months into the 2021 campaign, and what a season it had proved to be to date. Reward for reaching the halfway mark, arguably our most picturesque destination of the year, Golf Club Adam Stahl in Austria. Ewan Ferguson notched his fourth top five of the season to keep himself well within the graduation spots. But it was veteran Stuart Manley, in only his third event of the campaign, who took the trophy back home to Wales. Not too far to travel between tournaments for our next venue. In fact, just a hop over Austria's southern border and buongiorno to Italy. One man made his maiden victory on the Challenge Tour in this very event in 2014. A win that would spur him on to winning the Challenge Tour rankings the following season. It's a country that I love going to. I love the people, I love the food. Obviously, I've done really well there. I got my first professional uh, win there on, on the Challenge Tour, and uh, it turned things for me uh, in a way that I wasn't expecting so soon. Gouveia stands back and admires that one. Oh, and what's not to like about that? While Gouveia started brightly, overnight leader Austrian Lukas Nemetz was beginning to wane. Yeah, I had a great start. I mean, I, I started birdie birdie. Um, so I, I could shake the nervousness away quite good. <laughs> um, however, I've been struggling off the tee on that day. I made bogey eight, bogey nine, and Ricardo made birdie eight, birdie nine. Obviously, that was a big change. The game plan changed a little bit on the back nine. I tried to play match play with the course pretty much because I, at, at that time, I think I had a two or three shot lead. Just stay in the moment and stay patient. I knew if I did that, it was hard for me to lose that tournament. It was a great match until the end. I, I really enjoyed it. I, I played really good and didn't feel like I, I lost the win. I, it really felt like I gained second spot and was obviously a very good uh, week for me and changed a lot. Walking down 18, knowing that I that I was going to win after after the tee shot, obviously it was very emotional. It was very good to have a good friend of mine there following, and then uh, all the support back home, all the messages that I got after the the, the round was over was just overwhelming. Gouveia it is, a first Challenge Tour victory in six years for the man from Portugal, and a whole load of Road to Mallorca points as well. Just 10 events remained in the season, and only 20,000 ranking points separated 20th and 40th. A win or a string of solid finishers could see anyone climb the rankings and secure one of those coveted DP World Tour cards. A point underlined a week later in Finland. Well, this is Marcus Helikilder, who's out of position at the fifth. What can he conjure? Lovely, nice recovery from the Dane. Of course, I was nervous, 
But it was like, I was playing some really good golf and I think it was bogey three, bogey three until 16. And then I made a huge mistake from the middle of the fairway, hitting over the green, big short side, up to 10 feet and then three putt. That three putt made the final two holes a tense affair with his playing partner, Jesper Svensson. The pair would find themselves in a similar position greenside on the 18th. And this chip from Heli Kilda proved the difference as he showed off his short game. Well, that's a lovely touch from Heli Kilda, and it should be good enough for the win. Yeah, I almost cried, the people helping me, yeah. I was just really grateful at that moment, to be honest. It's so tough to win in Tunster, like, really, so. It's nice to get it, uh, get it done, and a win gets you so much closer to top 20. His reward for that victory? A fortnight on home soil and back-to-back -back events at Espierg Golf Club. First up, the Maiden Espierg Challenge, presented by Freya and Total Energies. And there was no doubting, the man in form. Gouveia in the mix again. This is for a closing birdie. Oh, so close. And the question now is, will it still be good enough for the win for Gouveia? As events transpired, it would indeed prove sufficient for Ricardo's second victory of the season. Seven days later, the Portuguese stamped his place on the 2022 DP World Tour with a fourth place finish at the Sidbank Esbjerg Challenge. An event dominated by Ewan Ferguson and Espen Kofstad. Where having played the very last hole in regulation, the Scot had the chance to take the title. So, all back to the 18th then. And with Ferguson short of the green in two after trouble off the tee, it was over to Kofstad to take his chance. And then I hit the best drive of the day and I put it in an absolute, I mean, I had on the number perfect lob wedge distance. So it was like one of those shots that I visualized and it was just, it was gonna happen because I just felt so clear. And then it pitched right on the front and then came down to two feet and that was nice. A high class shot at just the right time for Kofstad. Everyone was clapping. So I thought that must be really close, go up there and. It was a foot or two away and I had a chip shot down the hill and played a lovely little chip um, and it probably just stopped like a foot short at the hole. Tapped that in and he tapped it in and talked me again just to, to do it in a better shot, which is, which is fine. After two years of injuries and now four Challenge Tour victories to his name, it was a poignant win for the Norwegian. Yet another playoff followed a week later at the BNL Challenge Trophy. Four golfers this time vying for victory in the Netherlands. Among them, Marcus Hellekilder. I have some very specific things to do when I'm on the course, like mentally, golf-wise, and I'm just kind of like just plotting my way around. Very uh, statistical, correct targets all the time, and. Uh, try and take the emotions out of it. And that's what I did there as well. He came close, but the cigars stayed in the box for the day, settling for a share of second place behind the exuberant Alfredo Garcia Heredia. It was my week. It was my moment to win the, the golf tournament. So it was just a matter of uh, time. And that week, Holland, seven playoffs, all four people, I think it was more epic than usual, but it was, uh, it was my week. And at the seventh time of asking, Garcia Heredia sunk this 25-footer for the title. There it is. He's held his nerve and outlasted them all in this playoff to win for the first time. A hop across the channel to England next, where a familiar destination then returned to the schedule after a three-year hiatus.
Belfry Hotel and Resort is one of world golf's most iconic venues, and it's no stranger to top flight competition. The Ryder Cup itself has been contested here on four separate occasions. When we got there, I loved the place. It's just such a historic venue, so much tradition. Playing in the UK for me is always special. I think that you can't find a country or, or a place in the world that golf has more meaning, has more history, everybody values it. And, and I, you know, I, I felt that a little bit of that sort of atmosphere at the Belfry. Leon began the final day two shots behind Oliver Becker, but that deficit would prove short-lived. With the South African only able to card a level par final round, Leon earned the right to putt for the title. Well, he must have thought his chance had gone after that double bogey at 15. But Hugo Leon has a chance to win here at the Belfry. And he's done it. It is a victory for the man from Chile. Just such an amazing feeling. It's something that I always wanted to do. It was to be able to win on this side of the Atlantic. I've you know, been lucky enough to win in pretty much every tour that I've played and, and being able to have that done, and especially in the UK, is very special for me. So Hugo Leon securing himself inside the top 20 on the road to Mallorca for the time being. For the rest of the field, time was ticking on for any last minute chargers to make it to Mallorca and secure one of those sought after spots on the 2022 DP World Tour. Our challenge tour journey so far had taken us worldwide, with 17 different winners, each with their own captivating story. But it's back to business as Germany was our next stop, basing ourselves just outside the city of Munich for the Big Green Egg German Challenge, powered by VCG at Wittelsbacher Golf Club. Last man into the field this week. Will he finish first on the leaderboard? Yes, he will. It's a breakthrough win for Spain's Angel Hidalgo. Hidalgo would finish two clear of his fellow countryman, Santiago Tario, and the third round leader, Austria's Lucas Nemetz. Finished second there. Didn't play very good on the final day, to be honest. Didn't start very good and, and was always a little behind. I and uh, learned a lot and was a, it was a big, big step to the top 20 of the challenge ranking. Lucas looked to make amends the very next week as he was once again in contention at the Op Open de Provence. He was again the 54 hole leader, this time by four before eventually losing out in a playoff to England's Alfie Plant. Lucas would share second place with Germany's Marcel Schneider. And I managed uh, to, to, to play well and I, I finished second in the France event. I think I lost in a playoff there. So I, I felt, okay, I'm, I'm pretty close right now. Just one or two more good events and the card is mine. Schneider continued in the same vein one week later at Royal Obidos Spa and Golf Resort in Portugal. The German leader by three after three rounds. Well, it's all getting a little bit nervy now for Schneider. Here's the reason why Frederic Lacroix is on the charge. The Frenchman seems determined to make a real contest out of this. I was playing all right, nothing, nothing really special. And then it clicked in the weekend, started a bit far away. Uh, was like six shots off the lead on, on Sunday morning still. And, and yeah, just, just, just played a perfect front nine actually and, uh, and got really close to Marcel. It's been really impressive from the 26 year old Parisian. And Lacroix sets the clubhouse target at 18 under par with an excellent final round, 65. Well done, him. And now, over to you, Marcel Schneider, on the 72nd hole. So I just hit a good drive down the middle. I hit that six iron on the green. 
And then it was like, it was quite a long putt, around 10 to 11 meters. And I thought to myself, okay, come on, this is the chance. It's a win-win situation. You, you got to knock that putt in and you make your flight and you win the tournament. You got your card and I did, yeah. Looking good. Looking very good. Oh, it's quite brilliant from Schneider. What a way to wrap up the title and a second win of the season. Marcel maintained his form the following week for the Swiss Challenge, notching up a tie for 10th place, but the real story came in round two. Spain's Alejandro Del Rey, opening 74, was followed by a round that was 16, yes, 16 shots lower, as he became just the fifth man on any professional tour in the world and the first on either of Europe's big tours to shoot a round of 58, a round that included three eagles and eight birdies. A familiar face was also making birdies this week. Denmark's Marcus Hellekilde. Played some good golf. Made, I think I made like two eagles, eight birdies, and two bogeys, not so many pars. So, um, yeah, that, that was uh, what got me in, uh, in a good spot for Sunday. Heli Kilda, thanks to that stunning 62 yesterday with a three-shot advantage heading into this final round. Can he finish the job and make it win number two of the season? The decisions I take on course, uh, I don't want to sound arrogant, but they are better than 99% of all the other players all the time. Like, I know it's with 99% chance that this is the best statistical correct target. Breathing down his neck and standing tall, literally at six feet nine, Jonathan Jigger Thompson, a four under front nine, moving him up into second spot. And Marcus's playing partner and compatriot, Nikolai Christensen, was putting together a decent round. Five under through 16, now one back from Marcus. I was not too aware, to be honest. When I was, uh, I had a really good drive on 17. I thought I was leading by two, and then I hit my second shot, and, and then I just reminded myself, yeah, Nikolai, he just made a birdie. So I'm only leading by one, actually. Safely on board this 18th green. Heli Kilda with two putts for the title. And that takes the stress out of it. A simple enough tap-in for Heli Kilda to seal his second victory of the season. I knew I had secured my top 20 at that time. Felt like just a practice round. Yeah, I had fun out there. Uh, I always do, to be honest. So that was just a, a practice round with friends, and then I did a better job than them. There was another double header in Spain for the two remaining events before the grand final hosted by Emporda Golf, just outside Girona, in the Costa Brava region. There was another second place for Jigger Thompson, as he cemented himself into the grand final, with another huge jump on the road to Mallorca rankings after a brilliant Sunday 62. But the man on top by just one, Frenchman Julien Bruin, at 18 under, enough to win the Emporda Challenge. Magnifique, a win number two of the season for Julien Brun, and surely now on his way back to golf's top table. It's tough to win at any level, it's very tough to win here, so just, just to get one win was already great, and get two is, is even better, so yeah, for sure, it's uh, multiple wins is, is very nice stuff to do on this tour. New week? Same venue, but this time for the Challenge Costa Brava. Here, the runner-up spot went to Marcus Helikilder. Perfect timing for a late charge at topping the road to Mallorca rankings. But the winner by one was Kiwi Daniel Hillier. Now safely inside the top 45 on the road to Mallorca rankings and on the cusp of a DP World Tour card. He's done it. Now the release of emotions from Hillier after such a tough year.
25 tournaments in the books, and now just one to go as the road to Mallorca neared its final destination, T Golf and Country Club. Now we're down to the final 45 players at the Rolex Challenge Tour Grand Final, supported by the RDA. Who would play on the DP World Tour next season? And who would be our road to Mallorca number one? Welcome to the final instalment of the 2021 Road to Mallorca. Just 18 holes remain now. History beckons for this man, Marcus Hellikilda, hunting a third win of the season and to top the season-long rankings as well. If he finishes number one, he'll be just the third Dane in history to do so. There was a sticky start for Marcus, 37 out, albeit this birdie on the third promised better. But it was the real movers and shakers making waves towards the end of the round. To 18, and Andrew Wilson for birdie. This is for a third straight birdie, and for four in the final five holes. If he gets it, it could be huge. And he does, and Wilson is projected to rise inside the all-important top 20 on the road to Mallorca, and a place on the DP World Tour. And, you know, he was dead last after round one here. Now look at him. With one bubble boy safe, it was now up to Nicholas Norgard Moller, who, after birdieing two of his previous four holes, needed a further gain on 18 to secure his DP World Tour card. He may need this for the DP World Tour card. Brilliant! That could just have sealed his promotion. What a way to do it. After the first round of this tournament, I was fourth to last. And today, with five holes to go, I was outside, you know, the top 20. This is what you've been working for, practicing for all these winters. Make it count. As the drama was unfolding on the 18th, the clubhouse lead set by Lacroix, Brun and Gouvea at seven under. On 17, our leader, Heli Kilder, and got himself into a tricky situation. Bit of wind helping from the left. Couldn't really make it like turn over right to left, but I needed to get it like over a tree, or right side of the tree, and then hook it back in toward the flag. See the hands working hard there to get the shape. Can he find the green? Excellent from Heli Kilda as he fights for the grand final title and the road to Mallorca number one spot. A resulting par for the Dane to keep his nose in front by one as he came down the par five last. But on the green, Germany's Yannick Paul wanted in on the action. A seven under total, a DP World Tour card nailed down. Yeah, it's unbelievable. I just try to stay in the moment and try to enjoy every moment, and that's what I did. And yeah, luckily I finished. I had a good finish and uh, got my European Tour card. As the celebration started for those safe, there was the small matter of deciding who would be taking home the title. An over-aggressive approach here into the last had Marcus between a rock and a hard place, or rather, a tree and a stump. Well, what sort of contact, what sort of control can Heli Kilda get here? A degree of hit and hope, certainly. What can he conjure? Something... Pretty special is the answer. Somehow, all this curiousness of mine um, and um, creativity of mine uh, helped out with the, like, chopping out from the tree and getting it onto the green. As for Marcus's playing partner, JC Ritchie, meanwhile, this birdie putt required to jump inside the top 20. Oh, and that is going to hurt for a while. And after running his birdie putt past, Marcus left himself with one from five feet for his third win of the season. A par is good enough, and it's an all-conquering finish from Hellekilda, who not only wins the Rolex Challenge Tour Grand Final, supported by the RNA, but also finishes the season number one on the road to Mallorca. I'm, like, soaked in champagne now. I'm wet, I'm cold, but... I'm grateful for where I am right now. Uh, beautiful Mallorca with the 
as friends and won this tournament, won the, won the rankings. Uh, I'm really happy, but I do not think it's soaked in, to be honest. What a season we've had here on the road to Mallorca. After 26 events and 15 countries, it's finally complete. All that's left to do is to hand you over to our champion, Marcus Helikilde, to take it away with our successful class of 2021. First Dan pricing of here. Yeah, it, it feels amazing. I mean, I've worked really hard for this. Craig Howard, Andrew Wilson, Hurley Long, Nicholas Lerkon. I've been working for this since, you know, since I was 10 years old. Marcel Sim, Pavilion, Chase Hunter. It's hopefully be in the mix with some big names next year and, you know, having the opportunity to take them down. Espen Kofsta, Marcel Sim. Lucas Nemec. Top 20 was absolutely the, the goal for the season and yeah, very delighted to, to accomplish that. Yannick Paul, Ewan Ferguson, Oliver Becker, Alfredo Garcia Heredia, Frederick Lacroix, Julian Brun. It's my sixth year of the pro and I finally gonna get a chance to, to play in the first uh, I mean the main league and the main tour. Santiago Tarribel, Ricardo Correa. And the winner, Marcus Eikela! I love it. So, playing good, playing bad, playing on Challenge Tour, European Tour, I think it's going to be pretty much the same um, Marcus and pretty much the same feelings I have.